Hey guys, Spud here, and in this DCS F4U 1D Corsair tutorial, we're going to be going over the basics of using the three main types of weapons available to you in the F4U Corsair. Your six 50 caliber Browning M2 machine guns, your eight 5 inch high velocity aerial rockets, and your general purpose bombs for the dive bombing role. We'll also go over some basic tactics on how to employ these weapons effectively against our target today, which is the small airfield on Rhoda Island in the Marianas map. So let's jump in and get started here. Guys, as you can see, we're rapidly approaching our target airfield here on Tiny Rhoda Island. And let's get familiar with the basic controls of the three distinct types of weapons we can carry on our F4U Corsair. To control our guns, we have our Master Arm and Guns panel to the left hand side of the gun sight itself. To control our bombs, we have a Bombs panel to the right hand side of the gun sight. And to control our high-velocity aerial rockets, we have a bomb box on the right-hand wall of the cockpit, located right here. Now, in order to use these weapons, we have three distinct keybinds to use for these three distinct weapon types. So let's go ahead and hit the escape key and we'll go to adjust controls to show you guys these three different uh, keybinds we need. We need to have the guns fire button mapped to the trigger of your stick which of course makes sense for firing the guns in our Corsair. We also need to have the weapon release button mapped to our stick, and this is for dropping our bombs. And we also need to have the rocket's fire button mapped to either our stick or our throttle. If you want to be a little bit more realistic in terms of the placement of your keybinds on your HOTAS and your home cockpit, go ahead and throw the rocket's fire button onto your throttle actually because this button is not on the stick, but rather on the left wall of the cockpit in your Corsair. So we're going to set up for utilizing these three weapons in conjunction. We're first going to drop our bombs off of our aircraft, then we're going to use our rockets, and finally we'll do some strafing runs with our guns. So when it comes to setting up the guns, there's a couple steps. We need to first, of course, bring our master arm switch to the up arm position, we're going to turn on power to the outboard, middle, and inboard guns on our wings, and of course we'll need to turn on our gun sight in order to aim our guns, rockets, and bombs. We can bring the switch to either the up limit position or the down alternate illuminate position. It doesn't matter, it's just choosing two of two alternate uh, light bulbs within the gun sight itself in case one burns out or is damaged in some manner. We can then, of course, adjust the brightness of our gun sight using this rheostat just to the left of the gun sight itself. Let's go full bright to make things nice and easy to see. On the bomb box here to the right hand side of the gun sight, we have our arming switch for nose and tail or nose fusing on the bombs. Let's go down to the nose and tail section to make sure our bombs definitely explode on impact. The switch off to the right, labeled pylon release, is for the center bomb, and the left hand and right hand release is for the left and right hand bomb shackle respectively. For our first pass, let's drop the bombs off of our right hand and left hand shackles. So let's turn on those guys and we'll do a third pass for our third bomb, or a second pass for our third bomb, I should say. When it comes to our rockets, we need to turn our rockets on first by lifting this cover and then turning on the power switch to our 5 inch high velocity aerial rockets. We'll then bring the next switch up to the arm position to arm the firing circuits for those rockets. Next, we can either have it set to single for firing a pair of rockets with each, with each press of the rocket button or auto to fire all of the rockets off of your aircraft with one press of the rocket release button. We'll leave it in singles for today. Then, 
To finish off with actually setting up our weapons, we have to charge our guns manually. This is done through a hydraulic system in the wings of our Corsair. Unlike a lot of the other warbirds where the guns are actually charged on the ground to put a round in the chamber and get them ready to go for firing. This is a little bit of a hard switch to find, but it's these two switches on the left inboard side of the instrument panel, just to the left of your rudder pedals themselves. All I need to do is just give them a click and that will charge the weapons. So we should be ready to go. I always recommend just giving a quick score to the guns to make sure they work before you get into combat. We are good to go. We've passed our target airfield, so let's go ahead and bring the autopilot off and turn on back around for our attack. So autopilot's coming off, which is definitely nice to have here in a Warbird. And she is a heavy girl today, that is for sure. We're gonna check our engine instruments, oil temp, oil pressure, CHT is all in the green. And we're going to climb up a little bit for our first pass with our bombs. Now, of course, we are not going to be anywhere near a precision bomber with our bombs here in the DCS F4U Corsair. So just make sure that you have your expectations set for that. Our gun sight here is really of the super secret, highly classified TLAR bomb sight type, which stands for that looks about right. So uh, we'll go with uh, what looks about right in our dive into the target. Now, because we're pretty darn high at the moment, coming up to about 8,000 feet uh, for our dive onto the target, we have our supercharger going, and that is helping us keep our manifold pressure high to re retain good engine performance at this higher altitude. Before we start our dive down to the target, we're going to close our cowl flaps, and we're also going to retard the supercharger, so that way we don't potentially damage our engine due to shock cooling in the dive down onto the target, which is super, super important when you're performing a dive bombing attack, because shock cooling of your engine can kill your engine very, very quickly. All right, so we're coming up on the target here. We're just setting up for a perfect bombing run. And I'm gonna be happy if I can put these bombs onto the runway somewhere to crater the runway and hopefully we'll get a spray of shrapnel onto any parked Zeros or Bettys around the airport down there. Now, of course, for us today, we've got a couple of FW-190s playing the role of Zeros, and we've got a couple of uh, Ju-88s playing the role of some Bettys for us. We're going to check our engine instruments, and we are going to go ahead and close the cowl flaps at this point, and we are going to turn off our supercharger, and we are going to go ahead and roll on in. I'm going to shallow out my dive to start off here so I can get a steeper dive to finish off and drop the weapons. Of course, we're going to be using the weapon release button for dropping the bombs off of our aircraft. We're going to nose over slightly, and we can hear the whistle. And that is how Whistling Death got her name from the Japanese. Weapons away. We're going to pull off and turn to throw off any AAA gunners out there. Look over our shoulder and boom, impact right onto the runway, right where we were aiming. That's perfect. Now, as we climb back up, I'm going to bring my supercharger back on. And as we're getting to a slower and slower airspeed, our oil is going to start getting pretty darn hot. So let's go ahead and open up our cowl flaps once again. We're also going to check our oil cooler and make sure our oil cooler is in the neutral position as our oil temperature is starting to climb. And we'll bring our intercooler up to the middle position as well. I'm going to retrim out the aircraft a little bit here for this new airspeed, and I'm of course trying to climb with my ball centered as well as I can, and we're at a good climb speed for the F4U, about 130 knots or so. Let's go ahead and drop the nose a little bit and see if we can build up a little bit of airspeed to help keep our engine a little cooler. 
as we're setting up for our next bomb run, we're going to need to adjust our switches here. Left hand release off, right hand release off, pylon release, the center bomb shackle on, so that way we can drop our next 500 pounder. All right, and we'll start coming back on around here. Trying to make this turn as coordinated as possible as we try to claw back some altitude. Coming up back to about 8,000 feet, so we'll work with that. We're gonna check our engine temperatures. Oil is getting a little hot, so let's uh, make sure that we get our oil cooler opened up a little bit further. And I highly, highly recommend that you go with using some key binds for your oil cooler, cowl flaps, and your intercooler uh, levers here. That will make your life a heck of a lot easier. We'll get the cowl flaps closed for our next dive to the target. Again, trying to avoid that shock. We're going to get the oil cooler closed as well, as well as the intercooler. And we are going to start our dive down onto the target. And again, we're just using that super secret, highly classified TLAR sight once again. And we'll try and put our next 500 pounder right on the middle of that runway once again. Now I've made myself look really good here for that first drop. So let's see if we can do it again. Nose over for a bit of a steeper dive to finish things out. And here comes Whistling Death once again. That's looking about right. And weapon away. We're going to pull off. And of course, we're going to turn. So that way we can prevent the gunners from getting a bead on us. And boom, right on the side of the runway. I will call that pretty darn good for today. And instead of climbing way the heck back up there again, we're just going to stay at a more medium altitude at this point. Superchargers coming off now that we're below 7,000 feet. Retrim her out, and we're going to maintain this high speed as we set up for some rocket runs onto the enemy aircraft parked at the airfield here at Rhoda Island. We're going to come back around. We're going to open up the cowl flaps just a hair, and we're going to open up the oil cooler as well, and the intercooler slightly as well. There we go. And I've got a couple of zeros lined up right next to the runway that'll make a perfect target for us for some rocket runs. So as we come down for our strafing runs, which is what a rocket run essentially is, is a strafing run, we're going to want to make sure that we keep the aircraft nice and coordinated with our rudder pedals, so that way we can get as straight and true of a flight from our rockets as possible. We're closing up the cowl flaps once again for our run. Checking my ball, I'm a little off. And we'll fire our first salvo, see where they go. Right on target, beautiful. Second salvo. And let's switch up our targets, staying nice and fast. So that way the gunners have a hard time shooting at us. And we'll fire at some Bettys here. Boom. I think we took out a bunch of zeros and a couple of Bettys with that rocket run. And that should be all she wrote for our attacks with our rockets. And now it's time for some strafing runs. Again, we're checking our engine instruments, making sure everything is looking good. We're going real fast, so no need to open up those cowl flaps. And I'm going to leave the intercooler and the oil cooler where they're at for now. We'll see if we can pick out another couple of targets here. And it looks like I can see a couple of Bettys or some Zeros on the ramp down there. So we'll roll in. I always recommend making strafing runs in World War II from a bit of a shallow angle. It's going to throw off your gunners and give you some cover behind trees, mountains, things of that nature. And we are inbound. Again, keeping that ball nice and centered with the rudder pedals.
and once you're done shooting, keep turning. Turn, 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 turn. Make it harder for any gunners out there to shoot at you, of course. Don't make yourself an easy target. When you're making a strafing run and you're concentrating so hard on lining up your guns and your gun sight, it can be very, very easy to fly way too straight of a line and end up getting yourself killed as a result. Checking our engine instruments once again. Everything's looking good. Coming back around. And you'll notice here, we keep reattacking targets from differing headings on the compass rows. You never want to attack a target from the same heading every single time. That is another great way to get yourself killed by AAA gunners. All right, I've got a new victim. I'm going to reduce the brightness of my gun sight a bit. Get the ball centered. There we go. That zero is never flying again. Just shot up two zeros and a Betty. Perfect. Keep that turn coming. Make yourself a nice hard target. Of course, check in those engine instruments. Seeing what we need to do on the inner coolers, the oil cooler, and the cowl flaps. CHT is way high, so we gotta open up those cowl flaps for sure. We're gonna open those things up all the way. We are way above red line. That's not good. Get those things cooled down, and we should be good to rock and roll. So we're not gonna spend the whole video here shooting up the whole airfield, using up all nine yards, but uh, that should be a good introduction to you guys for using the weapons here in the F4U 1D Corsair from Magnitude 3. And of course, you can see we were flying a Corsair Mark IV this time from the Royal Navy's Fleet Air Arm. So please leave a like and a subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one, guys. Enjoy this beautiful game, and enjoy the Corsair.